Knock at the Cabin is directed by M. Night Shyamalan and stars Dave Bautista, Jonathan Groff, and Ben Albridge. While vacationing in a cabin far from anywhere, a young girl and her parents are taken hostage by armed strangers who demand that the family make an impossible decision to avert the apocalypse. M. Night Shyamalan might be the most hit or miss director I've ever seen in my entire life, in that, on the one hand, he might be one of my favorite directors as he's made movies like The Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, and Split, but on the other hand, he might be one of my least favorite directors having made movies like The Last Airbender, After Earth, or most recently Old. Whenever he announces a movie, it truly is a coin flip whether it's going to be good or not. And thankfully with Knock at the Cabin, the coin landed on the good side. But I would say just by this much. Don't get me wrong, I like the movie overall, but I would say that for every great Shyamalan-ism in this movie, there are just as many bad Shyamalan-isms in the movie. But before we get into that, let's start off with the great stuff, starting with the acting, which from everyone in the movie is amazing. Every single person in this movie brings the perfect amount of fear and intensity to their roles, and it just makes the entire viewing experience all that more tense. Whenever we're stuck in the cabin and our four main antagonists are trying to convince the three family members to make the impossible choice, as the advertising tells us, the entire time you're just watching it practically biting your nails because the actors completely believe 100% everything that they're saying and you don't really find yourself rooting against them because when you get down to it, every single main character in this movie is a person. They're not really a villain. Yeah, a lot of them do really freaking horrific stuff, but at the same time, they all have these very human backgrounds that make you not necessarily root for them, but care about them in some way, shape, or form. And when you get to when the family declines to make the horrific choice that is put in front of them, the result is some of the most tense and horrific things you have ever seen in any M. Night Shyamalan movie. Yeah, most of the movie takes place in this one secluded cabin, yet the amount of scale that this movie is able to convey truly makes you feel the horrific gravity of the situation. And considering just the ludicrousy of the apocalypse setting at face value, it does bring up a lot of good questions, mainly brought to the forefront by Ben Albert's character. He does bring up a lot of holes in the main antagonist's plans. He does bring up the fact that, yeah, not only is the situation completely ridiculous, but the way that they met each other is also suspicious, and just the amount of timing that goes into every single decision that they make is also equally suspicious. He not only makes his husband question their motives, but also makes the audience and the antagonists themselves question their motives. It's a small part of the movie, but that little bit of suspicion really did go a long way for me to really enjoy this movie. And along with that, the music and the score is also really tense at a lot of times, and just the the directing and cinematography is gorgeous, just like it is in most M. Night Shyamalan movies. All right, so those are all the things that I absolutely loved about the movie. The bad things, however, kind of go hand in hand for a why a lot of people don't like M. Night Shyamalan movies. For one, as great as the acting is in the movie from the entire cast, you don't really care all that much about most of the characters. I would say that the one who has the most fully fleshed out character is Ben Albridge's character, but with the exception of him and his story, we don't know all that much about everyone else in the cabin. Sure, we know little tidbits about maybe their personal life, like one bit about their personal life and their job that they have, but with the exception of those two very small things, that's pretty much it. I don't really expect all seven characters that make up the main characters of this film to be fully fleshed out in this hour and a half runtime, but at the same time, I would have liked a bit more, especially from Jonathan Groff's character, who I cared about by far the least. 
Also, there's the dialogue. A lot of the characters over explain so much in the movie that it becomes completely and utterly unrealistic, especially when they're supposed to be absolutely terrified. And the actors are bringing such great emotion to their performances, yet at the same time, they're forced to just spew out this word vomit. They are never allowed to use contractions. They always have to over explain everything. And along with that, they always have to over explain everything as if the audience are a whole bunch of fifth graders. Which for one of the characters, I don't really mind because that's kind of his job, but literally everyone else does that, especially Ben Albridge's character. Sometimes you get over it, but a lot of the times, for me personally, it just completely broke the tension. And then there's the ending. Is there a twist? Kind of? Does it ruin the movie? No. Do I like it? No. Again, it's just a bunch of over-explaining to the audience a whole bunch of plot points that the audience pretty much figured out like 30 minutes into the movie. And along with that, it's some of the most sappy dialogue and situations I've seen in pretty much any Shyamalan movie, which I would have given a pass to if I cared about the characters more. But because of what I said earlier and because of the fact that I cared about like half of the characters in that situation and I couldn't care about the other half to save their lives, I didn't care and I just thought it was cheesy. I wouldn't really call this a great M. Night Shyamalan movie. I wouldn't call this a return to form as so many people praise it to be. But with that said, I still do like it. The acting from everyone is fantastic, the tension in the cabin is always palpable, the sound design and score are unnerving, and the cinematography and directing are great. With that said, you don't care about most of the characters, a lot of the dialogue is very unnatural, and the ending is too sappy to be engaging. I don't think this is a bad movie by any means, and I really do like it. Yet at the same time, I would have liked a bit more. Maybe from the writing, maybe from the directing, maybe from both, but overall I would have liked a bit more. But still, overall perspective, I still do really like it. I'm going to give Knock at the Cabin a B+. Well guys, thank you so much for watching, and let me know in the comments down below, what is your favorite M. Night Shyamalan movie? For me, hands down, it is Unbreakable. If you haven't seen this movie, it is one of the best superhero movies ever made without it ever being based on a superhero comic. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are the best. And don't forget to click subscribe and click the bell icon down below to stay up to date on all things movie, all things TV, all things nerd.